I deliberately chose the New Living Translation this morning for our Bible reading because I wanted you to read it with comprehension. I wanted you to read it and let it sink because there were so many strange things that were pointed in that scripture. And the reason why all of you are saying, aha, aha, when you are reading is because even your brain should tell you that some of the things they wrote there should not be done. For example, do you need to be told that, in, like I said, in verse 7, that you should not violate your father by having sexual relationship with your mother? She is your mother. Do you need to be told? But I've seen it. I've read it in the news. The one that went around this weekend was clearly stated there. Why should a man lie with an animal? It suddenly tells me you are doing aha because you don't know how much of breach is in our times. How much of the how much the world has departed from the foundations that the Lord set it on. There is nothing written in Leviticus 18 that has not been practiced by men. It's against reasoning, but it has happened. People sleep with their daughters. Many years ago, I had the story of Papa Prophet Tio Obadari. There is a boxer that wanted to win uh, a major belt. And they went to some sorcerers and they told him that the pathway to eat is that he has to sleep with his mother. And the mother was in the know. And because she wanted the success of her son, they accepted. Because when people become very frustrated, some of these things that you think cannot enter people's mind, we say to him. So the, the privilege the guy had was that he, he was, and it happened in Lagos, and, and he was doing what we call kabu kabu, or what do you call it, or, or the present boat. So he took somebody to a crusade that Baba Badari was preaching, and as he dropped the person, Baba Badari said, in his Yoruba, he said, Eshio, wanikolo kajalabe yare, ayeti baje. He was just talking. You know, that's his Elisha or Ijesha language. Elisha means see shame. They told him to go and sleep with his mother. That's how God arrested the guy. If you know how much of detestable things happen in the, in the world, you'll be sure. But that's not even my focus. Uh, if you look at that Leviticus 18, there is something I want you to see there. As we are looking at the repairers of the bridge, part two this morning. Leviticus 18. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I'm the Lord your God. I'm still going to return back to my New King James Version. I just. Verse 3. Do not act like the people in Egypt where you used to live. Or like the people of Canaan where I'm taking you. You must not imitate their life. Which means the things I'm about to speak to you about are more prevalent than you even imagine. They happen where you are coming from. You're actually sandwiched between two patterns that are detestable. Egypt where you are coming from and Canaan where you are going to. Church can give you a false insulation that makes you forget how much out of order the world has gone. So God began to speak to Israel. You can't be like those nations. And when you go to verse 
verse 24. He said, do not defy yourself in any of these ways, for the people I'm driving out before you have defied themselves in these ways. So what God was speaking about that Israel should not do were the things being done in where? In Canaan. Do not defy yourself in any of these ways. For the people I'm driving out before you have defied themselves in all these ways. Continue. Because the entire land has become defiled, I'm punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. You must obey all my decrees and regulations. You must not commit any of these detestable sins. This applies both to the native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. All these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land where I'm taking you. And this is how the land has become defiled. So do not defy the land and give it a reason to vomit you out as it will vomit out the people who live there now. What is God saying? I'm not creating imaginary ideas. I'm telling you things you will see. Both from where you are coming from and where you are going to. And in fact, the consequence of these activities is where God had to remove those people. So when there are things we say and they look so distant, how can they happen? I will show you how they can become so present in the midst of our lives. And in fact, we will begin to find a way to accommodate them. It will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So where we pick the team from is Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. God told Israel where we read that these things I'm talking to you have happened in Egypt and they are happening in Canaan. In Isaiah 58 verse 12, go to NKJV for me. And those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of streets to dwell in. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. Why? Because all these detestable things that is happening in the world, God is raising a people that will be distinct, that will be called out from those things and they will be different from it. The Bible says in the book of Peter that we have been called out of this darkness into his marvelous light so that we might be a peculiar people, a holy nation, which means God knows that these things can happen in the world but is preserving a people called his church to be the pattern because through that pattern it will repair those breaches are you following that he said that's what you will be a repairer of the bridge and that's why we read on Thursday from the book of First Timothy chapter 5. And he spoke to us from verse 1 to 22. He spoke to us about how you should treat elders as fathers. Treat older women as mothers. Treat younger women as sisters with all purity. Teach younger men as brothers. Uh, and how you should embrace widows who have truly raised up children. And how you should honor elders who labor among you, you know, all those type of things. You have to begin to say it in church because the church must be the place where God's distinction is present. When you look into the world today, we see so much of disorder, but God is raising a people like he placed Israel between Egypt and Canaan and he expected them to be different from Egypt and different from Canaan. So when there's a prevailing spirit in the world, God wants to look into our community and see the difference. Because when he sees the difference, that's when he has the right to use us to repair. We can't, a sick church can't heal a dying world. Every time God wants to bring judgment, he must have found a standard before he can bring judgment. God must raise a Noah out of the world before he floods the world with water. He must raise a lot out of Sodom before he 
Because it's judges, so the, are you following me? He must raise a church out of the world, cut them up unto him before he condemns the whole world unto condemnation, burning with brimstone and fire. That is the pattern of God. Are you following me? And that is why it's important that we be the true standard of God, the repairers of the breach in the midst of our time. God does not leave things the way they are when they go wrong. He's a repairer. In the book of Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. He said, on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will repair his damages. The KJV said, I will heal his breaches. I will repair his damages. I will raise up his ruins. I will rebuild it as in the days of old. God does not give up when things go wrong. God is a repairer. Are you following me? God does not look into the society and say, well, men have chosen their ways. He's a restorer. He's a redeemer. He's a repairer. He said, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is falling. And I, what will I do? I will heal the breaches, the shakings that are there. In Jesus' name, all the patterns that are shaking in our world we will be agents of restoration. I said, you will find strength for restoration. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Isaiah chapter 3, from verse 1 to 7. For behold, the, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem, from Judah, the stock and the store, the old supply of bread, the old supply of water. Yes, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of 50 and the honorable man, the counselor and the skillful artisan, the expert and the enchanter. I will give children to be their princes. These are part of the disorders. And babes shall rule over them. The people will be very oppressed. Everyone by another, everyone by his neighbor, the child will be insolent towards the elder. Does that look, does that sound close? Even in church, some of you say, achievement like that. When some of you want to be disrespectful, you say, me, I don't respect people say you. What do they have to show? The child will be insolent towards the elder. The base towards the honorable. People that cannot keep themselves will begin to judge people who have had pattern. The videos of this one will begin to comment about church. The base. People who change girlfriends every five, every three, three days. We talk about people. You know, somebody said, it is somebody that is running that fell that we should ask, ah, what happened? If you are sitting and you fall. I mean, some people have labored for 40 years then they did something wrong. Like what happened in... Uh, in Australia, at Ilsong. Today, anything can become a sin. And sometimes the people who are judging the people who have had a pattern or a walk are the people who have never been able to keep anything together. Are you following? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? The base will talk against the honorable. Because we are in a system, we are in a world today where most of the people we call honorable are the dishonorables and the honorables are the ones we dishonor and the ones we should dishonor are the ones we honor. How can somebody buy nomination form? 400 million in this world, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. And everybody say, yeah, yes, yes. What did you? Ah, ah. But because the patterns, there, there are so many breaches. Even you, you say, yes, sir. I got bound, wa. Pastor, wa. So that you think I'm not biased. I'm just talking. I've been telling you I want to contest. None of you have paid attention. Because you honor the base more than the honor. I should buy the phone. <laughs> you see, this is the problem. As rich as Atiku is, it was his friends that bought form for him. <laughs> you people don't even believe anything. I hope
hope you have not started praising auxiliary in your street. Where is she? Because it's around your region. Be the base. Speak against the honor. When a man takes hold of his brother in the... Uh, where are you going now? Who is this person? No, you have jumped. Go to verse 4. I will give children to be their princes. Babes will rule over them. Verse 5. The people will be oppressed, everyone by his another, everyone by his neighbor. The child will be insolent towards the elder, the base towards the honorable. When a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, say, you have clothing. You be our ruler. Let these ruins be under your power. Your own case is a bit better. In that day, we protest. I cannot care your heels. For in my house, there is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler over the people. Somebody told me yesterday, anybody that wants to take over from this present government, has, he has a problem. They've borrowed doors to extinction. Everywhere. You used to want to be president. You see, there are things you understand. When they say, come and be ruler, you will say, the only reason why somebody will buy Nigerian form for 100 million with the present economy state is because it's a thief. I'm telling you the truth. Don't, if I see you raise your hope, the only thing I want you to raise is your prayer. You say, ah, things will change. Nothing will change. You buy a form of 100 million, your entire earnings officially for four years is 56 million. Shout out to my wife, Bawa. How many of you have gone to UCH recently? I was there. I had an emergency for a child. It took us four hours to be attended to an emergency for a child. Something stuck in the nose of my daughter. Four hours. The man that was registering the card should have retired 10 years ago. What's your name? Adari. He will press A. He will check. I am not exaggerating. It took him over one hour to register card. Who will be our ruler? How many of you have enough clothing and food in your house for us to put these ruins under your power? But thank be to God, when you give up, it doesn't give up. It's a restorer. I say it's a restorer. But my challenge today it's not even what we see in the world. It's what we see with the repairers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 1, Paul began to speak to the church. The church. He said, it's actually reported there is sexual immorality among you. And such sexual immorality as is not even named among Gentiles. What did God raise Israel to be? To be a difference between Egypt and Canaan. Which means there is something that should be present in the church that is distinct from that which is present in the world. But Paul looked at the church in Corinth and he saw something even in their midst that even unbelievers don't do. The reason why the repair is taking so much time is because the repairers themselves have become much compromised than we can imagine. What is the type of thing he saw there? That a man has his father's wife. Did you see Leviticus 18? And one, another thing that shocked Paul is that, and you are puffed up. There are people preaching the gospel and I do not sound judgmental because I have no power to judge anybody. But who have changed marriages five times and they are puffed up. Some of your mentors and idols because they are creating certain imageries in your mind and telling you, you know, even though they fail, they are still where they are. I want to tell you that having applause from people is not necessarily the same thing as having the attestation of God. I mean, some years ago, I think, last year, 
they were watching a TV series they call Preachers of LA or Preachers of Denver, one of them. And there was this lady that called herself a preacher and she is a preacher and she has an outreach to prostitutes. And you know, one of the things she does on Saturday evening is that she distributes contraceptives, condoms for people so that they can have sins safely as a mission. I sat down. I tried to comprehend. I did everything I could do. I've never been able to. But you see, why it's so no strange is because at that time, I think she was in her third marriage herself. There are certain things that are reported even among you, even the type. Some gossip that happened in church, even believers cannot do it. Even unbelievers say, ah, ah. And you are puffed up. You have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I indeed as absent in the body but present in the spirit have already judged. What's happening to this thing? As though I our present and him who has done who are present, him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. We don't destroy the flesh now, we pamper it. Even in our community. That his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus your glory is not good. There are things we are proud of that are the things that are even debasing or the what is what's that word? The marketing the gospel. Your glory is going good. Don't you know that a little living? One of the problems we have in the church today is that it's something small. Everything is always small. Nothing is always significant. If you hold on to things too much, people will say you have been too, too hard. If you are not careful, side chick is becoming official. Say, but she be. Come on. You just talk. Because something has happened. Who are the people taking away this thing? Therefore, put down the old living that you may be a new lump, since you are truly unliving. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Let me rush. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get into the message. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old living, nor with the living of malice and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you to, in my epistle not to keep company with the sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly do not mean sexually immoral people of this world or with covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you will need to go out of the world. These things in the world. But I've written to you not to keep company with anyone who is named a brother. I mean, I saw a pastor and I came here in Nigeria. He said, he just divorced his wife. And his wife just left. And he said, you know, it was your mother that first did it. What did the mother do? That the woman first had the extramarital affair. He said, but when it happened, I kept quiet. He said, then, when, my, when something had happened, she's now going on social media. Said, ah. And the people were saying, hmm. and they were seated. I'm talking about a church that had in that service not less than 5,000 people. It was your mother that first did it? Kilo she. There are things that should not even be named. And it became, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Right on, sir. Ah. And the funny man has a pool of Bethesda in Abuja where people pay to go and swim to be healed. And people are going there. And they call him major prophet. You are so confused, you don't even know sorcerers anymore. I've written to you not to keep company with anyone who is named a brother. 
who is sexually immoral or covetous is an idolater, a reviler, a, or a drunkard. Say a drunkard. All of you. Everywhere you are drinking all around. Book of Life. All you tamak people. <laughs> or an extortioner. 419. You call it business, business, business. Not to even hit with such a person. This was the value the church had. Not to even hit. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? I have no problem with what is happening in Egypt. I have no problem with what is happening in Canaan. But I have a lot of work to do with what is happening with God's people. God said you must not do these detestable things that they do. I'm not judging those who are outside. I'm judging those who are inside. But those who are outside, God judges. Who judges those who are outside? But therefore, put away from yourself the evil person. Who judges people who are inside? We. Did you get the pattern? If I see somebody that is a, that is a non-believer that has five wives, it is well, a short hour. I won't judge them because they need mercy. But if I see my head usher in a, in a strange place, I we, I, what will I do? When it comes to church, I will, what do you, what's that? I will suspend him. He will sit at the back. If I say a brother of 10 years who is always late to church, I will judge him. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Did I mention your name? I don't judge those who are outside. I'm not angry with Kim Kardashian. That's nothing that concerns me. God will judge those ones. But when I see a sister whose mentor is Kim, and she's confused what, who she wants to be, and she wants to be Kim outside and be quiet here, I will tell her, step down. You need to go back to believer's class. Because you don't know who you are. Are you following? Because these are the problems. Some of you are competing with Ronke uh, Oshodi, okay. Uh, competing. Even when you dress, I know that's the people troubling your mind. Now, today I came like the ballet. Yes. I want to judge them that are within. You, see, there are certain things. See, we, you, we, we will not lose our mind because of the prevalence of the times. There are certain ways we walk and nature tells us this thing is wrong. That's why you shall not sleep with your mother. You see how everybody will say, ah, because it's nature. But I will show you how the times can begin to shape you. That what nature should have judged naturally, you will begin to find a way to accommodate it. Some of you, anybody that leaves church, you are their best friend. You are always the one that seems to understand. You never understand good people. Say, Pastor, no, she that I Uh uh. Man, she be okay, she be okay, look, look back, she act fine. You will follow her. I won't give you communion. <laughs> you know those, those Orthodox churches, they had some ways they used to do this thing. Because they wanted us to know that there are certain things that are aberrations and they should not be named among us that are believers. I hope you are not the people counseling young sisters. Is it your body take by child? Come on, you know? Come on, waste time me. I have seen Christian sisters give such counsel. And you come to church, you do your mother in Hey, baba, baba, hey, baba. We are not repairers of the bridge. We just see the bridge and walk through it. 
Some of you know your friends that are going to hell. Even though they are workers in churches, you need to go home today. See them that. You don't tell it. You know your friend. How can your best friend be his girlfriend of a Yahubo? I'm speaking because one of the reasons why these breaches we see outside is not evil is because within the church that should be the balm of Gilead, there is so much of compromise. All of you, when you, ladies, when you want to say to there's not anybody can tell you. I'm a pastor, I've done this thing for 25 years. Hey, my, if we take you here, you go here. Say, but pastor, eh, today she no buruku no. Every time we want to put you in order, it's very hard because at that point you want to, you want to, you want to. And I, I'm not saying you should not say to, but listen. <laughs> what is behind six? It's more than seven. Or else you will end up in Olon Rojiji. You'll be looking for answers where there is none. Okay. If you think Paul finished there, if you go to 1 Corinthians 6, it continued. This thing is serious with Paul. He said, from verse 1, he said, Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous. He had dealt with sexual immorality. Another perversion he was seen in church is that they couldn't judge issues between themselves. They prefer the judgment of an unbeliever than the judgment of God's word. Are you following me? There are some of you here, your greatest mentors are not born again. They don't even, they are not going to the heaven you are going to. They say, this is not about religion. They, are my men- they, speak, they speak to me. Your greatest mentors defraud people. And build houses in a color way. And because your greatest goal in life is to build a house, they are more relevant than what I'm teaching here. Wow. My in the economy, in the 15 nautical. So this man said, You go to unbelievers. He said, He now began to look at them. Don't you know you will judge angels? Don't you know you will judge the world? I don't, I don't have all the time. He was speaking to them. He said, How much more things that pertain to this life? There were things Paul never wanted the church to take as normal. Complain with an immoral brother. I was following. Ability to trust the judgments of the world more than the judgments of God. And he said all those things. If you go home, read 1 Corinthians 6, 1 to 13. Go to 1 Thessalonians 4. Verse 1 to 7. Finally then brethren. We urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus. That you should have bound more and more. Just as you have received from us. How you ought to walk. And to please God. Tell your neighbor. Nobody walks anyhow and pleases God. There is a way to walk. To please God. There is a how to walk. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The first problem is that can we give anybody commandment today? In a liberal world where everybody claims I know what works for me. Do you know how people define truth now? People define truth relatively according to their own interest. So there cannot be something called commandment. You don't get it. So this, this is, but the apostles in the scripture, they could tell the whole church, this is the way you should not eat food, sacrificed to idols. Today, as the pastor is finished, you know, he was sacrificed to idols. We are alone learning. As the pastor said, don't be second wife of somebody. Said, she, she passed on my affair. Pastor will not marry you now. Like I was saying on Thursday, as you know somebody is dating somebody, and as he's dating somebody, he's pointing to you too. Doing pointer. And you know. And pastor said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't create confusion. If they don't want to walk, let them break. 
And as you are going, your friend said, That's the thing you are with you. Twenty. Twenty-five. I see Christian sisters talk like that. So that because you just want to have banana, have a reception. Reception. <laughs> I'm laughing. I will be here. To cancel you. That's, I've done it many times. When the wala comes, it is well. Those times, I will make sure you fast. Share a leg bow. Because people don't want, we can't give. He said, This is the will of God, your sanctification. Tell your neighbor, this is the will of God. Your son, what is your sanctification? That you should abstain from. They just sacked a, 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 what do you call it? A parliamentarian in the UK because he was watching pornography in the parliament. I said, ah, is that a problem? People watch it in church. They will sit down where you are preaching. Every of your haps, they have become pornography from Instagram to TikTok. He said, kill a woman. So there are some haps I still find it very hard to understand why people are there. Oh, just dancing, TikTok, dance in me. <laughs> I, do, I have more serious things now. I know the problem is that those phones pre install it for you, you uninstall it. There are some apps I will not demarket, but I don't remember they are on my phone. It takes me months. I say, ah. Because they are soft porn. What people call comedy now on Facebook is soft fun. Let's call. Just want to laugh. You don't want to laugh. You just want to something. You want to be steered. But this is the will of God for you. Your sanctification. That you should abstain from what? It will does not disappear. People abstain from it. What did I say? You abstain. You give space. Are we together? I'm not even married people. Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles. Somebody say Gentiles. What made the Gentiles to be able to accommodate sleeping with their mother, sleeping with an animal? The Bible told us it is called the passion of lust. Who do not know God? Who is a Gentile? A Gentile is somebody who does not know God. And we have to be a different people from a people who do not know God because we know him. Are you following me? We know him and we know his will. And his will for us is our what? Sanctification. That we should know how to carry our bodies, our vessel. That what they call vessel there is your body. Carry it in honor. It starts from the way you dress and you are dressed. Every five, five minutes, you want somebody to say you are looking fine. What's, are, are you on coke? You know, it's cocaine you keep taking and you are never satisfied. It keeps, no, cocaine. It's not just okay, it's me wiki. Omo, I know what it gives. It gives more problem. If 10 people are saying hello, 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 hello. There are people that say hello to me on social media. I first check it. Who is this person? If I don't know why that person said hello, he will never receive a reply. I don't have time. Are you going somewhere? Who is going somewhere? Don't waste your time. Carry yourself in honor. Pastor's wife, that want to be babes, they want to be sheishe. She was savage. Slay. Is that not what you call it? Slay. You want to slay. But you are slain. <laughs> we used to know about slain in the spirit. It's not slain in the flesh. Ah, you know. That no one should take advantage or defraud his brother in this matter. 
Because the Lord is the avenger of sorts, as we have also forewarned you. Who told you there is no warning in gospel? It's a warning. Don't bring demons into your family. Don't bring demons into your future. You are not Gentiles. That was where you used to be, but you are no longer anymore. Are you following me? God did not call us to uncleanliness. What did he call us to? Say holiness. Some of you have never heard that word in many years. Somebody say holiness. Say holiness. Say holiness. You must be holy as the Lord your God is holy. You can't mistake God. Where God stands on something is clear. Oh my God. Somebody you must be holy. That's what God called us to. God did not call you to win it by any means. When I win, I'll bring tight. God hates robbery for burnt offering. You can't rob. You can't defraud and bring it here. God did not call you to uncleanliness. God called you to holiness. If they will not promote you because you didn't sleep with them, let them not promote you. Some people were delivered by faith. Some people refuse deliverance to obtain a better resurrection. Some will win here. Some will win there, but we will all win. All Christians have already won. I know. Are you hearing me? So speak. Don't, don't, don't compromise to win. Win what? God did not call me and you to what? Uncleanliness. But to what? To holiness. And why am I saying all this? Because in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 to 19, Peter made us to know that judgment will start first in God's house. Do you know why? Because God will not have the right to judge the world when he keeps overlooking the imperfections of his own church. Even a man to be a bishop must rule his own house well so that he can speak to them that are without. We are his household. Are you following me? He is the bishop of our soul and he's insistent on putting his household in place so that he can have the power to judge the world. Do you get what I'm saying? Judgment will start where? We'll begin at the house of God. Brothers, Don't go and steal and say you are building family. You are not building nothing. If anybody is pushing you to sin, don't you know what our brother, your cousin has built a house. I'm not my cousin. I'm moving on my journey. Say amen. amen. Don't go and steal. There must still be something called excessive profit. And you should know. <laughs> but you know what you call it now? Breakthrough. Five <laughs> And the guy will come back and know the type of cause they will be seeing in their family. There's still something called excessive profit. There is still guidelines for mentoring. Your daughter mentor is sleeping on your bed. Beside you. Say, I want to mentor you closely to know how you pray in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Safu esheo. Safu esheo. Oro ikuto pani. Do we still... Some of you do as if you are never tempted. You got engaged one week. You started sleeping in the guy's house. I said, Pastor Mopa, we're engaged. Safu esheu. Safu esheu. Oro yukuto pani. All of you looking at me as I say, Tolu, are you hearing me? Kenny, are you hearing me? You don't have to have time to pray. 
I've been there. This type of prayer. If you want to pray, come here. Come to this altar. We'll put church for you. We'll pray. And <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. Now, let me go into the message. The question is, how did it get to a point that what, use, what we could use our natural senses to define as right or wrong before is getting so complicated to define? What happened? I don't think God needed to have brought commandments for Israel to know that some of those things were wrong. Yeah? It's because when certain forces begin to act on you, those forces have a way of mutating you. Outbreaks don't leave people the same. Are you hearing? Somebody left you because you kept the God standard, then they, they, ah, the next one, and you went to your friends, your friends said, you too, you are too overrighteous. Dear, dear. You know? You come close, you come low. You come close, you come low. Then you too say, I was the one stupid. Look at this word. So we built the wall. I'm dealing with the repairers, the people who are rebuilding. We built the wall and the entire wall was joined together. The book of Nehemiah is a book of building. Up to his, half of his height and the people had a mind to walk. They built the wall and they had what? That's where we all start from. It's called willingness. Everybody started out wanting to do what is right. We built and we had a mind to walk. Night happened when Sambala, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and the Ammonite, and the Ashdodite heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to get close. They became very angry. Yes? And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Verse 10. It says, And Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing. There is so much rubbish, so we are not able to build the wall. When they started, they were building, they had a mind to walk. When they ended, what happened? The strength of the laborers is failing. Eh? There is much rubbish and what? We were not able to build. What mutated those two positions? There are things that can happen to you and you become a shadow of who you have been. If you are not careful. What are those things? The Bible mentioned a couple of things there. Number one, the people, when they saw it, they were angry. Nobody does, likes to be on the bad books of people. The people were very angry. I don't know how many times Israel went to them and said, no, we meant no harm. We are only rebuilding the wall of our fathers. But they were very angry. And many times when you face the anger of people, it's not a place you want to be. Are you following me? Hey, leave us, mother of Jesus. You will be just, every time you'll be talking, you'll be trying to judge us. How many of you know some people never want you to have your standard because your standard is a judgment to them? Are you following me? They would rather want you to fall to their level so that you can... Today, we create bonds more from falling. People will say, you're my brother, my sister. When people fall today... People who do wrong today are victims. Have you noticed? People who do right are, are perceived as people who are judging. Victims. When they say, that person did something, they say, and you want to talk, they say, Pastor, do you know what she was going through? <laughs> Is that not the way you talk? You know what she was going through? Hey, do you know what she was going through? I want to ask you, who is not going through something? Everybody here has the license to be stupid. 
But God has not allowed us to be tempted above the measure which we can bear. But with the temptation, what has he done? He has made a way of escape. There was anger. He began to exert upon their decision. There was conspiracy. The Bible said the people of the land conspired to come and attack them. To create confusion. That was another thing. And there was much rubbish. One of the reasons why some of us are even tired is that we don't even know where to start. How many of you know there is much rubbish? I've told you before, it was Pastor Jubei that said, he said, by the time they are through with us, we'll be thanking God for people who are adulterers. Because when you compare adulterers to Sodomites, you say, where? At least he's still chasing five girls. But I cannot understand how this one is chasing a dog. It is where? Something has happened. There is so much rubbish. Somebody says so much rubbish. Is it the one we won't talk about church that is there? Before we now begin to go into the world, there is so much rubbish. Am I saying? If I tell you to come and tell us the rubbish in your bank, is a old salmon. Isn't it? Should I say you should come and say the rubbish? I was talking to one of my friends. I said, so we were talking, she's a lady and said, said, you know, she said something that I have had, but it struck me that day, said, I said, they will be disturbing you in your workplace now. Yeah, no man. She's married. Yeah. Say, so I sat down. People who are like our mothers. So, some of them are dicky and dickinesses. People can do anything in the name of rising. And it struck me differently that day. <sighs> Not because I don't know. But it made me to know that there is so much rubbish. So much. Years ago, one guy came from somewhere. It was Professor. Professor. Wale was his fan. Is it? They would say, ah, when he came somewhere, he would just appear on the pulpit. People don't know where he's coming from. He would just appear. I said, hey. So I told Wale, have you gone to his meeting where you see him appear and disappear? And he said, no, no. But he said, we just be telling people what of knowledge. I said, no problem. One day I sat in and I said, Wale, Wale, you go to the I don't talk like that. So Wale went for one of his meetings. I said, he should go. The only came back and said, there's nothing in the meeting. The only thing he did was I was just giving word of knowledge to people. I said, ah, it's word of knowledge, not a good thing. They have hyped the expectation of people that he would just be appearing and disappearing. By the time they got to know what this guy was doing, all the daughters who followed that movement, all, while am I lying? But what I label it, He will tell them the Lord said I should sleep with you. They will follow him. I'm not talking of something of five years ago. Am I lying? There is so much rubbish. Some of the people you are liking on social media, there is so much rubbish. You. They are. You saw light. You follow them. Say, this is my mentor. This is my mentor. There is so much rubbish. And I'm serious. I see that. I've seen the guy. He has resurrected now. He's resurrected. I've decided to see him again. And then I look at him. Allah had him. Allah. But he has money. That's the issue. He has money. And because the God we serve, should we talk about greed? Before we talk about sanctification, I mean, where do we start 
from there is and sometimes when you discover that these are the breaches you want to repair your desire to even start out how do I want to tell some of you now that you love money too much how and you will not feel like I'm a wicked person how do I want to tell some of you not to follow certain people? You would think I'm trying to make you not to be exposed to other people. I want to control your. I have told you, me was son, Mumma was son. This one, the first and foremost one, is in the U.S. It is coming soon. I have one or two, one or two, five. You are all my children <laughs> in the Lord. <laughs> But I know my sons. Now, I'm not using that to dishonor you. You get what I'm saying? You are me. Abraham does not know. Even Abraham, the Bible prophesied in Isaiah, he said, we are Abraham's children. Even though Abraham does not know us, Abraham can't count his son, but Abraham knows Isaac. <laughs> so, that's by the way. Hallelujah. Before they say, ah, one of your sons defrauded us. I said, he wouldn't know. <laughs> Somebody called me years ago and said, one of your church members died. I said, none of my church members died. I said, which one? Then they mentioned the person. I said, the person that left church for six months, or almost nine months. I said, it's not my church member. No, even when she was here, she was not my, she was just attending. I said, what happened to her? They cannot, even one of my church members looking at me here was angry. He said, ah, Pastor, you are not feeling sad. I said, I have to preach a message. My church member did not die. He's your friend. And when your friend was walking in error, you didn't tell her. Don't you see, most of you, most of us like to just be emotional. If I'm warning you on something and you are not listening, when the consequence comes, well, I will pray for you. But I might not weep. I'm telling you. Because I'm weeping now. That's all it is we say and we know what it costs us to say it. But people don't value it. I will stay here. It's going to be too hard. Why, how do we get to a point where we move from we have a mind to walk to our strength is diminished? When you find out you are in the midst of a generation that has enthroned feelings and pleasure. Do you know how people define what to do today? If you think, if it makes you feel good, then what? It's right. Don't seed your joy to another person. What they are telling you is that the God you worship should be what? Your joy. So what will people look for today? Immediately they want to, that, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 4 spoke about them. He said they will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Are you following me? He said they will love, men will be lovers of themselves. That is the society we are today. People so much love themselves that the pleasing of themselves is more important than what is right or wrong. Even in church. Are you following? Pleasing of self. They will be Lovers of themselves. If you feel good about it, do it. You like the guy? He's tall? Do it. Don't mind, Pastor. Do it. Don't worry. Do it. There will be lovers of money. See, when you 
when you begin to see these gaps, even you that want to repair, your hand will drop. There are some of you immediately they begin to move into don't be lovers of money. Your mood about the salmon will change. I said, you love money too much. Midweek service, you don't come. Activity group, you are not there. But when I say, I see your turn around. I see your turn around. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. <laughs> People like turn around. Yes, I see your turn around. But please stop being lovers of yourself. When you even have the money, you are going to have it for good works, not for lusts of passion. All of you that have started killing cow, five five cow every five five days in your mind, you come at general. One shot on CB. Come roll the latam. You think that's life? Second worry, can you control tutu? I won't mention his name. Very cold. <laughs> Are you thinking that oh, destiny has found me? No. You are just a lover of yourself. And when we live in a generation that enthrones their love of themselves, the breach will be very hard to repair. When you live in a generation where truth does not seem up to date. You know where we read in Leviticus 18 is one of the verses of the scripture that the LGBTQ plus because it keeps increasing. It's he said, how can you be talking about a God of 3,000 years ago? Who said, I mean, we're talking about present realities. Some of you, even now, there are certain words of God that you think they are not up to date to your situation. Have you noticed? For example, in Matthew 15, the disciples of Jesus were eating without their hands washed. And the Pharisees were hungry. Don't you, your disciples don't know. The commandment. Jesus said something. You people teach the commandments of men and use it to dishonor the traditions of men to dishonor the commandments of God. He said, God said, honor your father and your mother. You people said, whoever says to his father and mother, whatever profit you must have received from me is a gift of God. Yeah. Baba, am I drove the meal? Got him back, chef. I said, instead of the honor your father and your mother, came like a commandment, a responsibility. But the tradition of men turned it to, instead of it to be a constant, it became a variable. Whatever you receive. Do you know why? Because as people began, now, how many of you know honor your father and your mother is true? As a, it's an, an art truth, including when you are earning 33,000 naira. Because you, that word will not be true to you if you are beginning to look at the present state. Are, are you hearing me? What $1 was in 1979 is not what the word is in 2022. If you are not God fearing, there is a legitimate reason. Not to remember your parents. There is a legitimate reason. There is a point in your life where it's as if God's word is not up to date concerning what you are going through. And at that point, you will rather simmer towards the traditions of men than the commandment of God. It's a challenge we all face. Keep your body in holiness until this world where we have moved from when people don't even know, used to know their husband before they married them. They used to give their daughter a marriage. Who, can, who here among you can your father give a marriage? Your father just comes. Eh? Um... 
What's your name again? We'll try on. So, this is, I have done my own work. <laughs> this man, and you are looking at him, that you did not even ask what I want. I'm speaking the language of the 21st century. I mean, I'm not living for you. You have lived your life. I'm living. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not, no, I'm not saying anybody should come and give you a husband. I'm just trying to say there are evolutions of the time that is making it almost strange. Now, now I'm not saying you should marry who your father or your mother and trust you to by fiat. But I'm saying you should honor their, their voice. Some of us immediately anybody, if your father just said, why is that? What, who is our father? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your parents will always still be there. Are you hearing me? To those junctions. I know some of them because they too have breaches. They don't know how to guide now. How do they guide? Prophet. Listen very fast. Develop the counsel to answer. Are you hearing me? So that when there wants to be wala, you will know that it is real wala. It's not self-induced. It's I that I'm telling you. I'm a veteran in what I told you. The day I wanted to go get my, have my introduction, I told my mother, I've done everything I ought to do. You say you are not coming. I'm leaving here. I'm going to get introduction date. don't and I left. So don't think, I'm not training you because everybody, I'm not training you because A lot of people, they wanted to protect the assignment. They didn't know when it starts. But I was still willing to listen. Are you following? It's not that, that you just drive a one and say, Daddy, you're waiting here. Oh, near. Oh, Teddy, be come. I'm serious, but these are the things. Because some of you don't know the difference between westernization and Christianity. Where you came from, you didn't need their parent to marry. They just come on, daddy, that's her. <laughs> because they know that in three months they can change their mind. So there is no need for serious. Some of you, when you see a boyfriend, you forget all your parents, forget all your family. You say, ah, my boyfriend is the kingdom of God. So that when they want to deal with you, you'll be isolated. And when you want to go back home, I say, ah. You brought him and said, you are already pregnant. Kinekashi, please do everything in order. If they tell you that they don't agree and you are convinced, go pray. If they don't agree, talk to people that can talk to them. If they don't agree, come to me. We will talk to them. If they don't agree, if we have done it after a long time and we discover you are in the will of God, we will marry you. You will not die. But that, that will not be our first point of action. Are you hearing me? Let's teach this thing. Oh. This, you know, I'm teaching pastoral message today. In Matthew 23, 16 to 22, Jesus said something to the Pharisees. He said, the Pharisees said, if anybody swears by the temple, it's nothing. But if somebody swears by the gold in the temple, because suddenly the gold seems to have more relevance than the temple. He said, if anybody swears by the altar, it's nothing. But if he swears by the gift, and Jesus said, stupid people. That's how he said it. He said, you people, foolish people. He said, is it the gold that sanctified the temple or the temple that sanctified the gold? There is a way you journey and certain truths become very distant in light of what seems to be imagined trends of your time. Are you following me? And they will look valid. Uh, are, you, are you getting me, church? They will look valid. 
But, and at that time, you discovered that your rigidity on this is what the Bible says begins to get weak. When I want to cancel some of you, I've seen people which can which courtship was just one month, they are together. I've seen other people whose courtship was one year, they failed. Don't worry. But if you go do the statistics very well, the people whose courtship is one month, they are failed at 98%. You want to marry a stranger? You can't know people because they are lifting holy hands here. So hallelujah. I said, brother, I'm out worship. Come, let's tell you. <laughs> brother, don't worship me. I don't like you, Wobi. Only bow to you. Don't worry, me. At there, are we not in the world today where people are using their children for money rituals? Did they start like that? I think it's one day. God will give you understanding. Your strength is weakened when truth does not seem to be working. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, Peter said, Don't consider the promise, don't consider God as slack. A thousand years is like a day before the Lord, and a, a day is like a thousand years. He said, Some people think God is slack concerning his promise. There are moments in our journey where God looks slack. What we are facing, we see it more immediate than the promise that is given to us. And at that point, your resolution to stay true to what God says gets weak. But what you don't know is that what you call slackness, the Bible called it long-suffering. What is long-suffering? The reason why God does not act impulsively like us is because God's long-suffering is salvation. Because when God acts, you cannot undo what he does. You, whatsoever you do, he can turn it around. But when, he's, when he has acted, you can't turn it around. So he will take time Judges, do they talk as much as lawyers in court? Do you know why? Because when they say, this is my judgment. You people can say, objection, my lawyer, my judge. Because whatsoever you say can still be worked on. But whatever he says is binding. So when you think God is slack, it's because God's decisions are binding. Men's vituperations can change. Are you, fellow, are, you, are you following me? Did you get that, me, that message? So listen. He said, don't take it as slackness. He said, that's 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9, and in verse 15. He said the same thing. Number four. When iniquity abounds. Matthew 24, verse 12. And because lawlessness will increase. What happened? The love of many will grow cold. Lawlessness will increase. You will see so many people who will do wrong thing and it will look like he paid them. Are you following me? Talk to me. Ogba koloko one day si wambe. Ogba yawodi yawo one wambe. One yagan. They didn't die. <laughs> this one that somebody is even saying that uh, somebody is and one more way, more way. How do people say it? And one more way, more way, and you know those type of things. Iniquity we are bound with promises, and the love of many was good. But my ch my children, when sinners entice you, do not consent. Don't consent. That's Proverbs 1 verse 10. Let me give you a final thought. And the final thought I'll take from 1 Kings chapter 13 is a very common story that we know 
And I want to extrapolate a thought from it. And I think I can release you for today. The Bible said the Lord sent a young prophet from Judah to go to Bethel. Bethel at that time, 1 Kings chapter 13. This young prophet went from Judah to Bethel from verse 1. And God told him, go, go proclaim a word. Why? Because at that time, Israel was in apostasy. There, were, there had risen a king called Jeroboam, who went away from the Lord, who made two golden calves. He placed one in Dan, and he placed another one in Samaria, and he told Israel, that is their God. And he made all manner of people priests that did not have any right to be priests. He just created a whole confusion of worship. So God sent this prophet. Behold, the man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord. O altar, O altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he will sacrifice the priest of the high places who burn incense on you. And the men and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign. There are two things the prophet brought to Israel to Samaria that day. He brought a message and he brought a sign. And listen, you need to understand what I'm saying. He gave a sign saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. What is the word? The word is Josiah will be born. Are you following? And he will burn the priests on this altar. The sign is that the altar was split apart and the ashes thereof will pour. It came to pass when King Jeroboam had the saying of the man of God who cried against the altar in Bethel that he stretched out his hand from the altar. Say, arrest him. Then he stretched his hand. When he stretched, out, stretched, stretched, when he stretched it out towards him, withered. So he could not pull it back to himself. And the altar was split apart. That sign came to pass instant. The altar was split apart. The ashes poured out according to the sign. With the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. I wish I can walk this because there's so much here. There's so much here. Because when we come to our gatherings, we have our signs and we have the word. Listen, our signs are not an end in themselves. For example, the Bible says, sign, tongues is a sign. But tongues does not edify except it's interpreted. So somebody comes into your midst, he knows you are saying something, but he does not comprehend. But what does he give? He gives him a, a, a consciousness that you have an experience. The sign was to bring consciousness to Jeroboam that what this prophet is saying will come to pass. But that is not what the prophet is saying. What the prophet is saying, the message is that there will come a child. And so when they saw the sign, he had to pray for the king and the hand of the king was restored. The king said, man of God, you have to eat in my house today. Who will not honor a man who spoke and in five minutes what he said started happening and the man of God said king even if you fill your house with everything I will not eat because God told me you must not eat in that place you must not drink the way you came is not the way you will return everybody wants to be the friend of a man who signs are coming to pass instantly. Are you hearing? And the prophet went. And when the prophet went, some sons of the, another prophet staying in the city that you called the old prophet, went to the old prophet and told him, there was a prophet that came to Bethel today and this is what he did. And the old prophet said, where is he? And they said they had gone. And they began to chase him. And the Bible said, when he found him, he found him seated under a hawk tree. That means he got tired 
in the journey. They didn't find him walking. They found him resting. I remember something as I read that place that Elijah at a time too was running from Jezebel and he came under a broom tree and sat down and slept there but the angel of the Lord woke him up and gave him food the problem of this young prophet is that as much as he had spoken a word whose sign came to pass in his tiredness angels did not show up he was just seated there because there are things that God will do now and there are things that will take patience for God to do the God who made the altar to split in one second did not send an angel to feed the prophet. And people who are used to God saying it and doing it get confused when God tells them to wait for it. Ah, you didn't get what I'm saying. As the people who are used to when God says it, it comes apart, get confused when God is teaching them about the long suffering of God. So the prophet went to this man and said, Man, Come back to my house. And the man said, I like the KJV, he said, I, I may not. He said to the king in the beginning, I will not. But when he came to the old prophet, I may not. Because the God who says I should not eat has not sent food. The God who said I should not take the largesse of the king has not sent nothing. And that one said, I too am a prophet like you, you know now, you know now. Prophet unto prophet. Prophet unto prophet. And he brought him back. And the Bible says, as they sat down to eat at meat, the spirit of the Lord came upon the whole prophet and told him, because you disobey the word of the Lord, your corpse will not come into the tomb of your fathers. Yet, when I was reading that place last night, I asked myself, how did he finish the food? Where is it? Where? It's what we are performing that I know. I don't know what is tomorrow. This is how people's resolutions get weak because they are so immediate. Uh, are you following me? It's what is before them is so impressive that they cannot see what is ahead of them. And you know the story. He went and the lion came out and killed him. And for you to know, it's a sign. The lion did not devour his body. The lion did not devour his donkey. The lion stood. The body stood. The donkey stood. Everybody that saw it said, this is strange. Lions don't stand beside donkeys. One must give way for one another. So they went back to the city. And they told, they were saying it in the city. And the old prophet, and the old prophet said, that is that young man who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. And he went and carried his body and said, my brother, my brother. And he brought him home. And when he was burying him, he said, bury him in my tomb. And he told his sons. He said, son, bury him. Because the word that he said, that's what everybody has forgotten. Everybody's moved with the sign that he did. They have forgotten about the word that he said. The prophet said, I'm not concerned about the sign. I'm concerned about the word. The word that he said will come to pass. They will burn the bones of all these priests. Please bury me where he's buried. And the Bible said, Jeroboam did not turn around from doing his evil ways. Why did Jeroboam not turn around? Because he just looked at it. What happened to them? Even the person who brought the word did not get home. He didn't get them. So, two things that weaken people. What weakened the whole young prophet is called hope deferred. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Hope deferred. If I have obeyed God and I have not eaten what men give me, who should serve me? Huh? Who? God. God should send his angels. But hope deferred. Makes the art see the art was first powerful when he was standing before the king. I will not eat anything you give. That's what the Bible called people whose word fell on the stony ground. They sprang up immediately. Are you following me? There are too many people who are too immediate. They in the immediate, he looked at the king and said, I will not eat. But as he began to go, how did they find him under the tree? Because the journey caught up with him. 
without nothing sent to replenish him. Hope deferred. The reason why most people are beginning to accommodate what they used to fight before is because their hopes have been deferred. How many of you thought, because I did this for God, this cannot happen to me, and that thing has happened to you? Many years ago, I was talking to a lady, and they came to me. There was a lady who had a sister. The sister was extremely wayward. And the lady was church. And the sister married. And this lady married. And the sister that has had abortion so many times got pregnant. And the lady that never had known a man could never got pregnant. First year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. She began to cry. What is God? What did I do against God? Because the truth of the matter is that when you reject the, the, what the king gives, in your subconscious you are saying, my God can give me better. My God can give me better. Then you are going and the God did not give you. The sun was the sun. The moon was the moon. The stri- it was beating your head. Everything looked normal. Said, ah. Are you following me? So the young prophet. But why that is what made the young prophet not to react to God's word. Why did Jeroboam not react to God's word? It's another problem. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I think verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verse 11. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? Why? The young man did not got weak because his hope was deferred. Jeroboam, because sentence against an evil work, is not executed speedily. Signs can happen speedily, but the word might take patience. There's a difference between the the seed that fell on stony ground and the seed that fell on good soil. I don't have all the time to teach this. The seed that fell on stony ground, the Bible says it sprang up immediately. These are the people who received the word with joy, but when persecutions for the word came, they wither. He said, but the one that received it on good soil, they are the people who with patience. Everybody that is going to see the fullness of God's word will travel with God with patience. Because the man did not come to better that day just with a sign. Do you know how many years it took that word to come to pass? 800 years. Who will remember that there is a word? You have forgotten, but God has not. God is not a man. God is not a man. Everybody is attached to the sign, but God is attached to the word. The sign is to bring the attention of men that God has said something. But because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, the art of man is fully set in them to do evil. When the prophet died, Jeroboam just said, he forgot when he saw the sign do you know he was moved he was almost honoring the prophet but when he saw the death of the prophet he forgot the word I don't have time but when you get home read 2 Kings 23 this is 1 Kings 13 2 Kings 23 from verse 4 to 20 you will see that word literally come to pass with the name of the child. Josiah 800 years after burning the on that altar, burning the bones of the prophets of the high places. Spying the tombs that were on the mountains and bringing them down and seeing even the tomb of the prophet who prophesied what he did. And as he was about to bring out the bones, they said, don't touch that bone. This is the man who spoke what you are doing now. And he left the man there. People get weak because justice seems delayed and hope seems deferred. And because there's hunger against what they believe, there's conspiracy against it, there's confusion, there's much rubbish, there's anxiety. They get attached to the sign and forget the word because the word will take patience. To come to pass. Brethren. To 
today I want you to I want us to get very excited no matter what the enemy is using to exert on our conviction to get very excited back on the things God said to us that's my message because until we are excited about them we cannot have the strength to be the repairers of the bridge you will go through seasons and out of seasons in this journey you will be the prophet who God will keep his word in one second and we will wait on God and God will not show up for some time you will go through both seasons in your walk with God how many of you can stay on something that is true for 15 years and nobody agrees with you on it you will go through those seasons and Paul said preach the word in season and out of season let me tie up when God appeared to Moses and showed him the signs the scripture told us when Moses got to Egypt in Exodus 4, 29 to 31, he showed them the signs and the people of Israel rejoiced and believed him. They believed. Verse 30 and 31, they went to the elders. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and he did the signs in the sight of the people. Verse 31, they believed and when they heard that the Lord has visited the children of Israel that had looked on their affliction, they bowed their head and worshipped. The first people he went to were the people of Israel. And when they showed them the signs, they believed. Then in Exodus 5, he went to Pharaoh. And you thought what excites you will excite everybody. And he did the same things before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? I don't know him. Even when his serpent swallowed up their serpent, Pharaoh said, these people are high do, these people are high do, these people are high do. Increase their tax. Don't give them any support. After they've done that, by the time you get to verse, go to verse 19 of Exodus 5. And the officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble after he said, you shall not reduce any bricks from your daily quarter. Then as they came out from Pharaoh, they met Moses and Aaron who stood there to meet them. And they said, let the Lord look on you and judge. Because you have made us abhorrent in the sight of Pharaoh and the sight of his servant to put a sword in their hand to kill us. What they, when they saw Moses and Aaron before, what did they do? They worshipped. But now, what they worship for is being tested. And they said, the Lord judge you. Even Moses got st stressed. Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought this trouble on these people? Why is it that you have sent me? Since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this side, to these people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Since I came, what has been happening? More pain. In fact, it got worse. Because before I came, they used to give them straw for bricks. But when I came, they took straw and told them to make bricks. It got worse. There is something that will happen that what you used to be excited about can become something that even when they say it around you, you will not be excited to hear it. In Exodus 6 verse 9, after Pharaoh had dealt with Israel, Exodus 6 verse 9, Moses spoke to the children of Israel, but they did not eat Moses because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. The first time they saw him, they were still talking back. This time he was talking, they were just looking at him. What happened to Israel? It's the same thing that happened in Nehemiah. How you move from mind to walk, joy to walk, to what? There's so much rubbish. Strength of labor has is decayed. Because something has worked on you. Something can work on you that what you receive with excitement 
can become something you are totally indifferent to. But because God has trained you this morning, he has given you strength both to be able to be consistent in season and out of season. You will lift your hands in the out of seasons and you will still thank him. You will lift your hand in the, in the seasons and you will still thank him. You will thank him for the signs that come to pass instantly and for the word that you patiently wait for, for to come to pass. The same God who brought the sign instantly will bring the word with patience. None of them will return with their, their fruit. None of them. Even though they don't have the same gestation period. The gestation period of the sign is instant. The gestation period of the word is patience. But the same God is behind both of them. Do you understand me today? How many of us are still willing to be repairers of the prayer? We are not tired. We are not saying, but that's what everybody is doing. There are certain things that are very hard to define, my brothers and sisters, because it's become so normal, so prevalent. It's so normal now to be sent on an errand by church and you had your own extra. I told you before, years ago, many, many years ago, 2008, I went to buy the first set of instruments of Fitness Assembly. As I was in that shop, 90% of people that came there were definitely church people. Buying one microphone, buying one drum, buying this. I sat down because I bought a, a bit of a large consignment of things. And I noticed the trend. What is the trend? When people have finished buying what they buy, the person that wants to write the, the receipt will ask them, what should I write on it? It didn't make meaning to me. So people that bought things of 5,000 will say, write 7,000. Because they will go back to present it in church and collect extra 7,000. So when it got to my turn, I was very angry. He said, what should I write? I said, what did I pay? And when you want to make people see that it's wrong, they don't see it anymore because general verse has to it. Yes. I need to tell you the truth. Nobody be aware when you're more, 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 bishops. That's a big ministry. That went, how many of you remember when winners built a, a whole big school on the express towards Akurede? My, my cousin used to attend, is it my nephew or my cousin? My nephew used to attend that school. I've gone there to pick him up one day. It was a it was massive investment. What they built there is enough for some people to start private university. Have you noticed that when you pass through the place, it's not there anymore? It was men of God of their people that bought the land for them, knowing that there is not land. And they gave some of them contract to build it. And by the time we were going there, the female hostel was already ripping apart in less than one year because the people who took the money, men of God. You substandard. These are the they become prevalent. What do we need in food go? Then they will come to you. Everybody is looking to steal. So much that even when you want to say, but that is not the hey! Do you know it works here? And yes, I know, I know, I know, I know that even if, if you want to do what is right, even the systems does not allow it. The systems encourage you to be wrong. But nevertheless, don't forget the decrees and the commandments of the Lord. You are not Egypt, you are not Canaan. You are the re replacement of those people that God is casting out. You are God's people. Do you understand me today? Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Lift your hands 
and receive strength to be repairers of the breach. We will not enlarge this breach, we will repair it. We will not enlarge it, we will repair it. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Everybody lift your hands and bless the Lord. And receive strength. I've preached something very serious. Every one of us is under this pressure to just lower the standard or to break down somewhere. Uh, but we are the repairers of the bridge. We are the repairers of the bridge. We will keep family standards. We will keep community. We will keep union. We will keep friendships for what they ought to be. We will look for money the right way it ought to be. We will not we will not put our hands in iniquity. God will help us. Receive help today. Receive help today. The whole world is full of compromise. The whole world is full of detestable things. It's full of disorder. But we are God's people. We are God's people. We are God's people. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just talk to God in the way you can comprehend everything he has spoken to you today, everything he has said to you today. Everything, 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 everything. Every way, every way, every way, every way. Where are you breaking already? Where are you losing strength already? Receive strength back. Receive strength back in that place. Receive strength back in that area. Receive strength. The repairers of the bridge. Repairers of the bridge. God is looking for people who will repair. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Standing there in the midst of all, we raise you up with our praise. And as we worship you, and as we worship you, and as we worship As we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus. you to pray one prayer for yourself. Wherever self and pleasure have been enthroned in my life, these are the things that work on people and make them compromise. Lord, we lower them down. We bring them down under the feet of Jesus. Not as I will, but as you will. Not as I please, but as she pleases you. Not as I will, but as you will. Because this is what it takes to have the strength of repairers of the bridge. And as we worship you, your throne, Lord, as I worship you, your throne, and as we worship you.
confess to God, I take your word as the most recent truth, the up-to-date truth on any situation. I take your word as the up-to-date truth on any situation. I'm not looking for any assurance outside of what you say and outside of the things you are declaring. You will come true for me. I will wait on you and you will come true for me. You are up-to-date over my situation, up-to-date over my journey. I take your word as the truth. I take your, your word said I'm free from sin. Your word said I have overcome the power of sin. So I take your word as up to date. There's no need to abridge it. There's no need to upgrade it. It's, it's updated. It's up to date. It's up to date. It's up to date. It's up to date. I'm not moved because iniquity is abounding. No, no, no. Grace. Grace is abounding inside of me. Grace is abounding. You are not slack, Lord. You are not slack, Lord. You are patient. I wait on you with patience. I receive, Lord. Your patience is making me a better person. Your patience is perfecting me. Your patience is perfecting me. Your patience is perfecting me. And as I worship you, your throne. And as I worship you, your throne. Jesus. You are going to pray one final prayer for yourself. Lord, I, am, I, be, I receive an insulation against the prevalence of iniquity in my time. Because judgment against evil is not speedily done. The hearts of men, something enters, it's an action, but what does it target? It targets the heart. It goes for the heart of men. Something begins to happen inside of people. People will say, well, well, when, when robbers are praised to the high heavens, when thieves are called honorables, what are they trying to do to you? They are telling you, follow the dishonorable path. Something is happening to your heart. Lord, I receive the insulation of the Spirit to follow, to stay on the path of truth in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself this morning. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. You will come true for me. You will come. You will build the house for me. Uh, you will build it for me. You will build it for me. My children will not labor. They will, my children will not starve. You will do. You will take care of me. Even till old age, you will bear me. You will bear me. You will bear me. You will bear me. I will not choose the part of the dishonorable and the part of the insolent. No. I will not walk in the way of Canaan and I will not walk in the way of Egypt. I will be your peculiar treasure. I will be your holy people. I will be your redeemed people and called out of darkness into your marvelous light. I celebrate your light. I celebrate your word. I celebrate your conviction. My strength will not be weary. Oh, pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Receive strength in your inner man. Receive strength in your inner man. I know everybody is saying marriage cannot, nobody can be trusted. Trust cannot be the, the fountain of marriage. No, you know, that's the way of Canaan. That's the way of Egypt. Lord, in my own household, by your strength, trust reigns. By your strength, love reigns. I have the strength inside of me. Edify yourself in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith. Pray in the Spirit. Receive strength in your inner man. No weakness here, no weakness here. Oh God, we are not, we are not, we are not cracking inside. We are not cracking inside. We are not cracking inside. We have strength in the inside. I feel we should pray this prayer. We are not cracking inside. If we are not healed, we can't heal the world. If we are not touched, we can't touch the world. If we are anxious, we can't bring them to rest. Father Lord, we receive peace and rest in our spirit. We receive peace and rest in our spirit. 
we stand from the position of victory. We are not defeated by no satanic device, by no cancer from the pit of hell. We have strength in our spirit, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Finally, say, Father, send us as repairers of the breach in our times, in our families, in our workplaces, in our churches, in our friendships. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. After God has touched you, let him use it to touch others. Send us forth as repairers of the breaches in our time. Send us forth as repairers of the breaches wherever we go, in our friends, in our families, in our churches, in our networks, in our business life, repair us of breaches because you have touched us. Because you have touched us, we will not be enlargers of the breach. No, 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 we will be repairers of the breach by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. We that are stealing are stealing no more. We that are lascivious are lascivious no more. We that are drinking as drunk as are drinking no more. We that are fornicators are fornicators no more. We are sanctified. We are washed by the blood of Jesus. We have victory. We have victory. Now we are repairers of the bridge. We are repairers of the bridge. We are repairers of the bridge. People coming to the saving knowledge of the Lord. People coming to order. People loving their wives and loving their husbands and loving their children. That's the influence we are bringing all around. We are repairers of the bridge. In Jesus' mighty name. Shando lo bodia de de gadia bo, rande gele bodia de bolo gadia daba, rama shando lo bodia ba, la reka de ba kosi de ba. We are the appearance of the bridge. Lift your hands and give God praise this morning, and honor Him that He has not made you part of the crisis. He's making you part of the solution. We are not of them that do detestable things. We are not of them that do things that cannot be that cannot be had with the ears. We have them that restore men to the way of life, to the way of salvation. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing. Power of majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar by the sound. shout one shout there is something you have the world does not have he said i'm going to send you the comforter the spirit of truth which the world cannot receive 
but that's the spirit that seals you up as a son of God that is something inside of me that's not in the world is the spirit of God I want you to nothing compares to it he's my teacher he's my peace he's my comforter he's the one that regulates my emotion he's the one that directs my path he's the one that quickens my mortal body sir I cannot let nothing can compare to it I want you to lift your hands and thank God for the guarantee of the spirit the seal of the Holy Ghost the seal of the Holy Ghost that he has given to us and bless his name it's more than wine, it's more than silver. Do not be drunk with wine, wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Lift your hands and give a praise. And nothing compares to you.